Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, starting at verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was chief among the tax collectors. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus and who he was, and could not because of the crowd, for he was little of stature. And he ran ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, and he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I have given to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For, as, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord is blessed. From uh, this piece of scripture, we want to talk about, preach this morning on a uh, theme of evangelism becoming an evangelistic church and what do we need to do in terms of being able to have God use us. Uh, but I want to talk this morning about saving the sinner. Yeah. Yeah. What does it mean to save the sinner? By your heads, God, thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, God, as we enter into consideration of your word. Bless us today. Thank you for each person under the sound of my voice. I pray, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would open our hearts to receive the engrafted word of God for the saving of our souls. Sanctify us by thy truth, for thy word is truth. Give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we might behold wondrous things out of your word. Minister to us. Give us ears to hear that what we must hear from the spirit. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And the word of the Lord is blessed. You can sit down in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm going to turn this on now, Brother Deacon. God bless you to all of the... Uh, Everybody, Amen. this morning, good to see you in the house of the Lord. Good to see uh, Sister Catherine back in the house of the Lord. And she was under the weather. I didn't know she was under the weather because didn't nobody tell me she was under the weather, but I'm just a pastor. I don't need to know everything, right? That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to talk, you know. But at, at any rate, I'm, I, I prayed for you when I found out. Amen. That you were sick, so it's my prayers that brought you back to the church. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll take credit for that. Uh, we were blessed last week by uh, Minister Marcus. Amen. 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 And so thank you all. Thank you for carrying the word of the Lord. And yeah. We thank God for your gift and your new shoes. Yes. And so. Uh, good. <laughs> I'm good. petty, right? That's what it is. It's probably God is good to us. Uh, he's very kind to us. Um, I want to talk, and I, I mentioned to you this summer what will really be my focus and where my heart is. Uh, for where the city of faith needs to go. Um, it's not just where we need to go, but how we need to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God is the God of growth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if God, is, if God is in it, it should grow. It yeah. should blossom. Your life should blossom. Yeah. Our church should flourish. And mm -hmm. all of these things should be in plenty because we serve a God who grows things. Yes. I know he grows yeah. things yeah. because when he began to set up civilization on the earth he didn't start by building a city mm. he started by building a garden All right. yeah. and characteristics of a garden is where things grow yeah. right. and so God is a great cultivator he's a great agriculturalist yeah. 
He's uh, very concerned about the earth because he understands that I can put something down on the inside of the earth and it can blossom and it can come forth and it can be fruitful. And so God is, the, is a God who desires us to be fruitful yeah. in every area of our lives. Whenever we invest ourselves, we should have some sign of productivity in our life in order to measure how successful we are. Yeah. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the word of God was not mixed with faith in them that heard it and that it did not profit them anything. It, it, it's not enough to hear God's word if it's not getting down on the inside of you and germinating and growing and then it's coming forth. The Bible says that many of them faded in the way and they faded in the way because they didn't see any profit. And sometimes in our life, we're human. So if I don't see any benefit of doing something, uh -huh. well, uh -huh. you know, and, and sometimes we're too quick because we, we want to see things overnight. Right, yeah. but, but if you're going to be mature, if you're in it for the long haul, you've got to be able to plant the seed, yeah. water it, yeah. walk away yeah. from it, yeah. come back the next day, yeah. water it again. Yeah. You got to keep tending to it. Yeah. One of the, the, the fascinating things I remember uh, about kindergarten, uh, it's amazing what you can remember, but one of our projects was to, to plant a little, remember we had the projects, we take a little seed and a little cup right. or whatever, and everybody had one, and you wrote your name down right. on it, and you put it down, and then you put it next to the window, and every day I remember coming back to see, is there anything growing in my little cup? And I remember being discouraged because I remember I planted the seed on yesterday. Now, it's been here overnight. How come ain't nothing come out of this thing? And the teacher had to tell me to just wait. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's nothing for you to do but wait. Yeah. wait. And it does not, waiting does not mean the absence of action. It, it means that I am waiting for something to happen, but there is something for me to do while I am waiting for something to happen. I have to be able to cultivate the, 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 the ground where the seed is. I have to be able to water it every day. I have to be able to make sure that it gets the proper sunlight. And over the course of time, it does not happen overnight. And I'm afraid of a generation who thinks that everything needs to happen right now. Yeah. Everything, if you don't, if it doesn't happen right now, you walk away from it and you quit. But then in maturity, time teaches you that some things you just have to wait on. Yeah. You can't walk away too soon because if you walk away too soon, you may walk away from your investment. Yeah. And to invest means that I am in it for the long haul. Your relationships are an investment. Yes, right. They may not be what you want them to be right now. Right. But you, it, you cannot be foolish to walk away too soon just because it's not immediately gratifying to you. I have to keep watering it and keep investing in it and keep cultivating it. And over time, yes, over the course of time, yes, things sir. begin to come back to you. The seeds that you plant in your life begin to come back to you. The problem is that sometimes we invest good seed. Yeah. And we reap a bad harvest. Yes, yeah. yes. It, it, it feels like sometimes when you're nice to people and they return anger and evilness to you, when we get things back in our lives, we say, I have not sown this. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. The Bible says when they went out into the field and they began to plant and they came back, they said that the wheat and the tear, they grew together. And they were frustrated because they said, I planted the wheat, but why am I getting this tear with it? Yes. I am getting what I want, but I'm also getting what I don't want. Out of life. Have you ever been there out of line? That, that I'm getting some things that I want, but not everything that I want. And some of the stuff that I have, I don't want. Uh -huh. yes. And God has to teach you over the course of time. This ain't even part of my message. Right. I ain't coming here to talk about this. But what I'm telling you is that they're over the course of time in your life, God begins to cultivate yes. when you're able to see more wheat than you do tear. Uh -huh. When they said, we didn't sow this, all of this tear is coming up with this wheat, he said, leave it alone. Yes. Don't try to fix it. Uh -huh. 
Don't be frustrated by it because if you have a garden, you are going to get some things out of the garden that you didn't sow and you don't want. But the tear does not mean that the wheat is not valuable. And sometimes we are so enamored with the tear in our life that we never appreciate the wheat in our life. No, they are not everything that I want, but they are some of the things that I do want. Yeah. So if I celebrate what I what is good in you, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. maybe you become more good. Yeah. Yeah. This is important yeah. because Jesus, well, God in the book of Genesis, when he created the heavens and the earth, when he put the sun in the sky, when he created the firmament, yes. he, every single day, at the end of it, he says, it is good. Yes. Yes. It's a win today. Yes. Of what I did, I, I had goals, and it came out the way I wanted to, yes. and it is good. Yes. Don't wait for people to say it is good. Uh-huh. You have to say that yourself. Yes. You have to be able to have self-affirmation for yourself that you don't wait on the applause of people. You right. need to be able to that's applaud right. yourself. Yes. Yes. That's right. Jesus says, God says, when he created all these things, he did not go on to the fourth day until he had finished the third day by saying, it is good. Uh-huh. People ask me, how am I doing these days? I said, I'm doing good. I ain't get shot by the cops today. That's a win. Because, you know, they shooting down black people. Unarmed. Laying on the ground with your hands up. Telling them, I don't have a gun. I actually work a job. I'm here working with the patient. And they'll shoot you anyway. And when you ask them, why, they, why, why did you shoot me? I don't know. So if I ain't get shot by the cops today, it's a good day. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Come on now. Jesus, I I want us to pay attention to how Jesus evangelizes. He does most of his work outside of the church. Notice that. He comes in church to teach to pontificate, to do all of those, the worshipful things. But really, the most creative things he did was on the outside of the church. He can't walk on water in the synagogue. He can't feed 5,000 on the inside of the synagogue. He can't call Lazarus back from the dead on the inside of the synagogue. Most of the wonderful things he did that really caused crowds to come around him and to build momentum toward the cross happened on the outside. And the question is, if we want to be like Jesus, then we have to take clues for him that maybe we have spent too much time on the inside. And on the inside, that's great because we need to come in and all have all those different kind of things happen on the inside. But it seems like Power is cultivated on the inside, and miracles happen on the outside. He came in long enough, and when he couldn't get to the synagogue, the Bible says he set himself apart and went to pray. There's always a place where he created an inside, even if he was outside. He says, I need to get away. I need to pray. And when he began to pray, the Bible says one time when he got ready to pray, he had sent his disciples off ahead of him on the boat. He said, I'm going across to pray. Y'all go get on the boat. And when he comes back to them, he is walking on water. So, So maybe his ability to walk on water comes out of the fact that he had gotten on the inside with God. He begins to teach his disciples that when you pray, don't pray as all of the the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who get out in the front and be deep. He says that when you really want to pray, come away. Come into your closet. And the God who hears in secret rewards and open. There has to be a syncopation between what we do on the inside and what happens on the outside. He says that if you do right on the inside, I'll make right good things happen on the outside because I've heard you in secret on the inside, but when I reward you, I'm going to do it out in the open. And all most of the miracles, healing blind Bartimaeus, the, 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 the girl who, who dropped dead and he spoke to her and said, Talitha Kuma, or the man who was dead and he touched his, his casket and, and, and he arose, all of those things don't happen on the inside. Yeah. 
Yes. They happen on the outside. Yes. When they happen on the outside, he builds this momentum that the Bible says that he had to go into cities in secret. Because they knew if Jesus was on the outside, something miraculous was going to happen. Yeah. And they would follow him even when he was doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that he was doing nothing. And he just looked around and said, these people have been here all day without any food. When he says that, he is not ministering. He is actually trying to get away. He just realized that now I'm in this place, and everywhere I go, these people follow me, and I realize they haven't eaten all day, and the miracle happens. That miracle doesn't happen on the inside of the synagogue. It happens on the outside. So part of the church's activity should be some outside activity. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Wherever I put my feet, it belongs yeah, to him. Yeah. So I'm not going anywhere he has not been before. I don't have to be scared about standing on the street asking somebody, can I pray for them? Because the earth is the Lord's. Okay? So, so most of the, the things that we really, really celebrate happen on the outside. We look at Matthew chapter 5. The Beatitudes, it says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, and blessed are the pure in heart. He's teaching life-changing knowledge to them. But the Bible says he went up onto a mountain, mm -hmm. and when he was set, his disciples came before him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, he did what was usually happening on the inside, yeah. he took it to the outside. Yeah. 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 And they came because they heard his voice. Right, right. Okay? So, so one of the characteristics of City of Faith is what we have to do is that we have to do some stuff on the outside. Yes, sir. It's not enough to be on the inside. Amen. Amen. People are on the outside. Yeah. Do you know that hundreds of people every week walk right past our church? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. They could get in here. Yeah. We got to go get them. We got to go get them. Jesus does wonderful things on the outside. Okay? E evangelism, one of the things of, of evangelism, one of the principles of evangelism is meeting people. Okay? I want you to hear that. You have to meet somebody if you're going to evangelize. The, the, the problem is with church people is that we meet people who we've already met and we minister to people we've already ministered to. Uh -huh. And there comes at some point where we get lazy, where we don't reach out to people because part of us says that people are horrible. Have you ever said that? Yeah. Yeah. That genuinely people are horrible people and I don't want to bring any more horrible people in my life so I don't want to meet anybody. I got my friends. No new friends. That's what Drake said. No, no new friends. I'm not doing any of this. But, but God uses your life to bring people in the kingdom. And if you have cut off yourself from meeting people, how can God bring people to your life that you're supposed to bring in the kingdom and you don't want to meet them? Mm. Man. Yeah. Help us the, the problem with church people is at some point we're okay with being church people right. and we all of our friends are church people everybody we sin with is church people everybody we do everything with is just church people and and we don't reach out to anybody anymore and so our world becomes insulated but Jesus teaches us yes. over and over again that you have to extend yourself even to strange people. Yes. I am not saying give them your social security number. Right. I'm not saying y'all got to, you know, be all in each other's lives. But I want you to recognize that Jesus brings people to the kingdom by using people. Yes. And if you cut yourself off from people, maybe you're cutting yourself off from being a utility of the kingdom of God to bring glory to God. Yes. Yes. He needs your life. Yes. And the question are, is, are you available? Yes. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Or have, are you just like some church people want to come to church to have a good time? Mm -hmm. 
time, time, time. Just shout, dance, sing, let's just have a good time. We have a good time. Preach and preach, everything, and everybody waving hands and all that, that's wonderful. But then you ask somebody, what did the preacher preach about? I don't know. He was good, though. Because sometimes with church, and I don't even know why I'm saying this, it's not about sometimes what the preacher says. What we remember is how the preacher made us feel. We had a good time, and goosebumps, and she sang. And I love all of that. But all of that ain't bringing people into the kingdom. And sometimes when people join church, we're surprised. But, but here's what I want to, to, to give you, City of Faith, is that if God is going to grow our church and thus to grow the kingdom, he is going to do it by using your life. Yes. And is your life available mm. for that? Yes. Yes. Or have you said, I'm, I'm, I'm done with people? You, you can't say, I want the church to grow, but I don't really like people, and so I don't want to know nobody. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Because you can't evangelize somebody you have never met. And if you're going to meet them, it's got to be for the first time. And so we have to pray that God gives us a grace to get over some hurt and our fear so God can use us. So that's one issue. The other issue is that if God uses your life and brings somebody across your path to minister to, who are they meeting? Who who are you? If, 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 If I don't know you and you're supposed to minister Jesus to me, when I meet you, who am I meeting? Am I meeting somebody that's depressed and broke and discouraged and generally sad and angry and bitter. You ain't got no joy, no peace. And people meet you, and this is who you are, and they say, well, if this is Jesus, I don't, I'm, I'm, (laughs) I'm I'm good. I got enough problems. Or are they meeting somebody who is full of the joy of the Lord? Someone that is magnetic and contagious, that people want to be around you because you emanate something. Yeah. There's something about you yeah. that, that I, I, I get around you and I feel like I can tell you all my business. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had people do that? I know people yeah. just get to just start yeah. talking. Yeah. But that, that's one of the ways in which God, yeah. in his creativity, allows people to come into your presence yeah. and experience the presence of God in your voice and in your demeanor and allows them to open up. And that is an opportunity to minister to them. But sometimes that happens and we don't know what to do. Sometimes God brings people across our path and we don't even notice. Mm -hmm. We're so busy, consumed with what we got going on that we never notice the stop that, that maybe God is bringing this person across my path and he is telling me something, that I'm supposed to say something, I'm supposed to be something to them. God uses your life, and the question is, is your life usable? Mm. Well, I evaluate, whenever I was looking for a place to live, the, the key to me is to go into the bathroom. If I could go in the bathroom and stand up straight, and look myself in the mirror, then we're halfway there. Because it does me no good to be able to go into my bathroom and have to duck down to look at myself. Because most places are made for short people. Yeah. No. <laughs> and so I, that does me no good. Like it, 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 it does me no good. What I am saying is that if I can't have a mirror that is at least my height, this isn't user-friendly for me. And the question is, how user-friendly is your life to God? Does God always have to adjust to your attitude or to your mood or what's going on with you at the moment and say, I can't bring nobody by them today because 
they still upset about what happened 20 years ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Is your life user friendly? And let me tell you something. God is not looking for silver vessels or golden vessels. He's looking for yielded vessels. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you have to say, God, I'm available. Fill me. Yeah. Yeah. Give me what I need in order for you to use me. Yeah. Every single day and every single way with all of my issues and all of my stuff, God, I still want you to use me. Yeah. Let my light shine. Yeah among men? Yeah. Or do you have the light of God and you hide up under a bushel? Uh, I'm preaching from the Bible yeah. this morning. Yeah. Your, your life has to be user friendly and if you cut off yourself from meeting new people God can never use you yeah. to build the kingdom. Yeah. And so we have to pray for a grace to God to be open yeah. to use me. Yeah. Wrestle down my insecurities yes. and my fears. Yes. And all of my excuses about why I say God can't use me because I don't talk well and I don't know scripture like somebody else knows. Wrestle down all of those insecurities yeah. and say, just God, give me something yeah. to say. Yeah. I wake up today saying, God, give me something to say to somebody. Yeah. If it's just hot. Yeah. Whatever it is, use my life today to be a witness and a light yeah. so that my life can be used to bring people into yeah. the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus in this text, it's, a, it's one of the, the, the oldest texts I remember. Zacchaeus, there was a song we used to sing in Sunday school. I can't remember. Something about Zacchaeus is in a sycamore tree, something. Who? He was a wee little man, a wee little man. What's he right? Yeah, 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 yeah. there it is. Y'all didn't know that in Sunday school? No. We was Kojic, so we had different songs. Um, but it was a song about Zacchaeus being a wee little man, and he was up in the sycamore tree. Jesus sees him and says, come down because I'm coming to your house today. That was one of the earliest stories that I ever met. But it's a little more, a little more detailed than that. So let's walk through this for a minute. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. The, the fame of Jesus has gone out because he spent more time outside than on the inside. And so Jesus is going about his day and the word about him was that he's passing through the city of Jericho. So the people, as Jesus, uh, the fame of him went out, he would, he would days, days before he would enter into the city, the whole city would be in anticipation because Jesus is coming. And they knew that he was a miracle worker. And they knew that if they were in the right place, that I have to position myself I have to position myself in order to receive from him. He is not everywhere. He is passing through this road. The road leads through Jericho. The road is going to be crowded. But Zacchaeus says, I want to see him. The, the, the background of Zacchaeus was that, yes, he is short, but he is rich. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. I can say a whole thing about short men and, and power and you know but I'm not going to do that even though it's the truth and I shouldn't be penalized because I'm tall and the truth is the truth but it is what it is so he was he was short on one level but he was tall on another level mm -hmm. All right. and, and sometimes when we are deficient in one area right. we accentuate one area to bring balance to the area where we feel inferior so he, he's, he's short, but he has position because he is a tax collector. It is not enough for him to be a tax collector. He has to be one of the top tax collectors. And the Bible says he was rich. He's, you know, okay. So, so he has position and he has power. He wants to see Jesus. He thinks that my position as tax collector and the fact that I am rich should draw an attraction to Jesus. But he is just somebody in the crowd. And the Bible says that because he is short, I still want to see him. If I stand where I am, I am not going to see him. I am rich. I am powerful. I should not have to go through these changes because rich people are privileged, spoiled, narcissistic people. Rich people in their narcissism 
thinks that they can be president of the United States because they've been spoiled all their life. And whenever they get up to talk, it's about them because when you spend so much time looking in the mirror, you can't see your own faults. Yes. Yes. Come on, Pastor. And when you are rich, uh -huh. you buy people around you uh -huh. who pad your ego right. and your lies about yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> and before I take it back, yeah. I'll add more to it. Yeah. So he says, I am a man of privilege. I am a man of money and wealth. I am a man of position. I should not have to go through these changes, but I want to meet him. Yeah. Now, he is, he is caught because if he solely lies on the fact that my money and position should buy me entree to Jesus, he will never meet him. Because the Bible is not concerned, Jesus is not concerned about how much money you have. You cannot get to meet Jesus and buy your way into the kingdom of God. You can't position yourself in life and think that that gets you into the kingdom of God. If you are going to get into the kingdom of God, the Bible says you got to come like a child. And you might have to do some childish things like climbing a tree. Why am I a grown man climbing in a tree? When I was a kid, we climbed every tree we saw. There came a point where I stopped climbing in dreams. But if I want to meet him, yeah. I have to do what I did when I was a kid yeah. and be childish yeah. in my, my doings yeah. to be able to position myself. Yeah. Yeah. He climbs in the tree uh -huh. to see Jesus. Yeah. He climbs in the tree. Jesus passes by. Uh -huh. And while he passes by, the Bible says, Jesus looks up yeah. and sees Zacchaeus yeah. in the sycamore tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. This is good. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> no, no, no. It's really good. <laughs> because usually when you look in trees, you look to see fruit. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. But how strange it is uh -huh. that the tree has a fruit on it that did not come from the tree. Uh -huh. All right. Zacchaeus becomes the strange fruit on the limb of the tree All right, because it is a harvest of humanity. Uh -huh. if, you have, if you have a field of wheat, if you have a field of strawberries, if you have an apple orchard, the fruit is there, but if you do not go harvest it, Jesus says the harvest is ripe. Got no labors. The laborers are few. What the Bible is teaching us is that the outgrowth of the human tree becomes human fruit. And it must be the, the responsibility of the kingdom to harvest yeah. the human yeah. fruit, wow. to bring them into the kingdom of God. Yeah. I see you. Yeah. You're in the tree. Something happened because humans don't grow on trees. <laughs> and it is what, it is what the, 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 the songwriter said is strange fruit. It's OK, though. Zacchaeus, come down from where you are, yes. because I'm coming to your house to eat yes. tonight. Yes. He invites himself to Zacchaeus' house. Uh -huh. Now, here's the thing. <coughs> it is somewhat rude and presumptuous for Jesus to impose himself on Zacchaeus and his family to come eat. I would never do that. If I want to come to your house to eat, I'm going to send you a text or call you yeah. and say, uh, you got some food tonight. You know, some kind of way I'm going to nicely invite my First of all, make sure that you can cook. And then second of all, make sure that you cook it tonight. And then second of all, I'm not going to find out who's going to be there. It's, that, it's a whole lot of changes when it comes to me going somewhere. Jesus does not get any of that information. 
He says, come down here because I'm going to your house tonight. Zacchaeus comes down. Zacchaeus says, fine, let's go because this is what I wanted anyway. And when you do what you need to do in order to position yourself for the miracle, the miracle does come to pass. Mm -hmm. It does happen. It can happen in your life when you position yourself to Jesus the right way. But here's the issue. He's going to Zacchaeus' house, but the people around him Uh murmured, everybody, the Bible says all of them murmured, and says that Jesus is going to eat with a sinner. Mm -hmm. Here is where the problem that the church has is that we don't want to be guilty by association, so we don't have sinner friends anymore. And everybody we sin with is saved and they go to church. So it doesn't look bad. It's what my father used to say, two white sheets can't get dirty, they can get wrinkled. That's what he used to say. That's, that's a metaphor for church sin. We ain't getting dirty, we just wrinkled next to each other. But, but Jesus, here is my issue. If Jesus does not have a problem being associated with a sinner, why do you? Because we know you ain't Jesus. I'm not Jesus anyway. Jesus has no inhibitions because it doesn't lessen who he is in the context to which he finds himself. Jesus says, I could go to the bar. Uh-huh. Drink smoke all around. And I'm still Jesus. Because I am not diminished by my context. He can go to Zacchaeus' house and not lose his salvation or his holiness. But the problem with us is we don't feel holy unless we go around other holy people. But holiness isn't holiness in the midst of holiness. Holiness is only holiness in the midst of sin. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting. He sent his son into the world. An unholy context. A holy God. Took off all of his robes and his divinity. And he poured himself into a different context, which was humanity. I feel like doing this this morning. And he said he thought it not robbery to lower himself. And the problem with church people is you can't lower yourself enough to help somebody. Now you act like you don't know what sin is. Right. You get at we get amnesia. I don't remember nothing I did. I never, I never understood how church people say God forgave me for everything, but you ain't never did nothing. I don't understand how you can be guilty and innocent at the same time. And that every time somebody points a finger at you and say, Yeah, you did this, you say, No, it's just the devil. No, it ain't the devil. It's it's you. Because even church folks sin. Right. And we have problems. But that is not what makes us holy. It is God's grace that makes us holy. And Jesus says that I don't care where I go. I'm still Jesus. And the the issue is, can God send you into some unholy context that you think he saved you from? Maybe he saved you to go back. Yeah. Have you ever considered... I know all, all, a lot of people who get saved and the things I used to do, I don't do no more. And the places I used to go, I don't go no more. But in 2016, yeah. the question is why? Hmm. Yeah. why? Why don't you go if he could save you? Wow. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. If he could save you out of it, yeah. maybe he could use you to help somebody else. Yeah. If, 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 if he brought you out, he had to have to use somebody. Right. It was somebody. Everybody came to church by somebody. Right. Yeah. Everybody was born into the world, came by somebody. Yeah. 
So God needs somebody yeah. to birth somebody else yeah. into the kingdom. Yeah. But if you don't go to places you don't use, used to go, right. and if you don't do the things you don't used to do no more, now all you're doing is looking at your watch waiting for Jesus to come back. Wow. And while we waiting on Jesus, yeah. shouting, having a good time, good old time, uh -huh. there are people being lost. Yeah. 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 The people who may be still caught up in some things yeah. that if you would just allow God to use your yeah. life, he could use you as an instrument to yeah. bring them out. Yeah. And to do that, you have to be long-suffering. Yeah. Number one, because people don't change overnight. Right. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, you have to be patient with people. Right. You have to be kind to people. Yeah. You have to be a nice person to yeah. people. You have to at least be able to listen to people, even if they're telling you a story you don't relate to at all. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to Zacchaeus' house because they said I have to quit. They said he was a sinner. Yeah. When they said he was a sinner, this is what he says to Jesus. He says, here's what people don't know about me, is I'm a good person. I gave half my money to the poor. Anything that I have taken from people, I have restored. I restored fourfold back to them. I'm a good person, but yet the word about me is all I am is just a sinner. But I am more than that. All I need is somebody to see that I am more than that. Nobody knows. They think I'm just a selfish tycoon. I just take people's money. But Jesus... Can't you see that I, I'm, not, I'm not a selfish person? I'm not a bad person. And if somebody would just take some time with me, maybe they could see the good in me. I know the rumor about me. And the rumor about me makes me want to stay away from the people who are talking about me who don't know me. Yes. They just think they know me. Yes. Or put a pen right there. Sometimes people only judge you by what they see of you. Right. Right. What he is saying to Jesus is, there's a part of me that people don't see. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I may be a drug addict, but that doesn't mean I'm worthless. Yeah. 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 I may be, I, that doesn't mean I, just because I'm, I'm, I'm a prostitute doesn't mean I don't love my children. Yeah. Sometimes I'm doing this to take care of my children. Yeah. Can you see the good? Yeah. Why everybody is judging. Yeah. The worst in me, Jesus, can you see the good yes. in me? Yes. For all of the money that I have, I've given half of it away. <laughs> if I've stolen from somebody, I gave them what I took from them and gave them more. Is that good enough? Zacchaeus is having the question that most people in the world have today. Am I good enough for your Jesus? <laughs> I'm gay, but am I good enough for your Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Come on now. I'm on drugs, but will your Jesus have me? Yeah, yeah. It, does your Jesus love enough to love me while they are talking about me to see that I am more than what they are talking about? Yeah. And maybe what they're saying about me is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Jesus, Jesus. Do, you, do you see the stuff that they don't see? It ain't a rumor about how I gave half my life savings away. It ain't a rumor how I gave to the benevolent. There's no rumor about that. It's only a rumor about the bad stuff. Yeah. Jesus says, okay, Zacchaeus, I see you. That's, that's all sometimes people want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You affirm them when you see them. When the woman with the issue of blood comes to him, Jesus says, behold the woman. Yeah. Stop looking around her. Yeah. Stop looking past her. Behold her. Yeah. 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 Zacchaeus, I hear what they're saying about you. But I'm Jesus and I am committed to you. I'm still coming to your house. Yeah. And Jesus says to him, salvation now has come to your whole house. I am not just concerned about you, Zacchaeus. I'm concerned about your kids. I'm concerned about everybody in your house. And because you, 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 made, you took extraordinary measures to get my attention, 
And when I said I was coming to your house, I said it so everybody can hear. Because Jesus loves in public. Cornell says justice is what love looks like in public. Yeah. He says it won't be just for me to say I am coming to your house and then get pressured by people who say I shouldn't come to your house. He says, I love you enough to keep my commitments to you. I am coming to your house. Today, salvation is coming. And this is how he sums it up. I came to save mm -hmm. those that were lost. Yes. Yes. If, if you're not lost, then you don't need me. Mm -hmm. He says, they that are not sick need no physician. Right, right. I didn't come to save the saved. Yeah. 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 Stand to your feet. Yeah. Yeah. Good God, God came to Zacchaeus' house, and in 2016, I still believe he goes to Zacchaeus' house. He just goes through us. Yes. Yeah. He goes through us. God lives through us as we share with those who are hurting. Yes. Come on. Yes. We say that every week. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And the question is, can God use us? Are we available yes. enough to see Zacchaeus and say, I'm going to come spend some time with you yes. because my mission is to bring you into the kingdom of God. Yes. That's the heart. That's what I think that's God's heartbeat to me for us in this season. Yeah. You, we have to have a grace to evangelize, to go out. It's time now. Yes. Yes. We've spent enough time on the inside. Amen. Great. Amen. We got to go get them. Amen. We got to go fishing. Yes. And I believe that if we commit ourselves to that, God would use us by your hands. God, thank you for your goodness, thank your you. mercy, your kindness. Thank you. Yes. thank you, God, that your love is better than life. Yes. And because of that, our lips shall praise thee. I pray that you make each and every member that is joined to this spiritual house, yes. city of faith, yes. that you would make us all evangelists, yes. carriers of your message and your love. Yes. I pray, God, that you would make this house available to you, yes. that you would cause us to yield more to your spirit. Yes. Yield more of our lives to be instruments of peace yes. and instruments of salvation. God, change us while we endeavor to do your will. Change us to make us what you need us to be yes. in order to use us. I thank you for it. I praise you yes. that souls are coming oh, into yes. your kingdom yes. and souls are coming to be saved Hallelujah. at the city of faith. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, that you're using our lives yes. to bring yes. people yes. into the kingdom, God. I thank you, oh God, that every, every seat is not just filled, but everybody, every seat in here is going to be filled yes. with somebody who needs yes. something from you. I praise you for it. Change us in your presence. Use us like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Clap your hands. Give the Lord a praise. Hug somebody before you sit down and ask them, can God use you? Can God use you? I know you Thank you, Lord. I want to be used. Jesus' name.